Thank you so much, Reverend Sizek. Now we um, would like to hear from uh, Dr. Michael Kinneman, who's the General Secretary of the National Council of Churches. Thank you, uh, Dr. Madsen. Uh, I'm the General Secretary of the National Council, but I'm pleased to say that behind me this afternoon are representatives or heads of a number of our member churches. The National Council is an umbrella group comprised of 36 of the major denominations in this country. And behind me are leaders in the Greek Orthodox, the Armenian Orthodox, the Episcopal, Methodist, Lutheran, Baptist, and other communions. And together we want to say as strongly as we possibly can that we identify ourselves with the statement, excerpts of which you just heard, that we denounce the kind of anti-Muslim bigotry which we see across the country, certain parts of the country at this moment, and we identify ourselves strongly with the call for religious tolerance and acceptance. We believe at the National Council of Churches that um, the diversity of this country strengthens our faith, that we are made deeper and richer in our own Christian commitment by virtue of the relationships that we have with the Muslim and Jewish communities, and it's a great pleasure and an honor to be with those colleagues at this meeting today. I want to say that at this meeting, we, as you heard, adopted a statement which we present to you that we hope will be read across the country, perhaps in congregations, in mosques and synagogues. But we also talked about next steps that we could take as communities of faith to carry this word even farther beyond these, uh, these walls and these organizations. We talked, for example, about calling on our networks, our constituencies, to replicate this kind of meeting in local settings across the country so that what happens now in Washington at a national level will happen also in targeted cities. And we talked about how we might do that using our own media networks and also thanks to you. We believe that um, for example, at the National Council of Churches, we have made national statements that call for acceptance of Muslim neighbors and have spoken out as strongly as we can about the issues you've heard today. But we also have called on state councils of churches, including, for example, in Florida, to initiate activities in their own communities that will say no to this kind of bigotry. And uh, we're getting a response already. We hope that that will continue into the future. So we, that was a part of the meeting today, not simply to stop with the statement, although it responds to the moment and must be heard, but also to carry that word of education and hope into the future by um, calling on local communities, our own networks, to replicate it. I want to say only one other word. You heard this from Reverend Sizek, and I appreciated so much his comments. Uh, Christians in the West have often been responsible for the kind of uh, intolerant rhetoric that we now hear from various places in this country. So it's important for us as a Christian community to, hear, to say an unequivocal no, that is not who we are. Our own faith calls on us to bear not false witness but true witness, and that means to speak out on behalf of Islam, for example, as a peace-loving and peace-teaching faith, and to say that these are our deed, our brothers and sisters. But I want to add only one other word. At the National Council, we also know that there are minority Christian communities around the world now that also feel themselves to be threatened by extremist voices in situations that are predominantly Muslim because extremists in those settings may use the rhetoric in this country as a pretext. And so it also is in Christian self-interest to speak out strongly now a word of tolerance, knowing that our Muslim colleagues in other places are doing the same on behalf of minority Christian communities there. We live in an interdependent world. It is very important that we speak this word of interfaith acceptance hospitality together. Thank you.